Recently, I've been talking to lots of people at the start of their careers, and we've had a couple of new starters at work, and it's got me thinking about how we generally think about advertising and media especially as a career. Welcome to Media Imposter. My name's Jack, and I'm here to help you make sense of advertising, creativity, and careers. And today, I just wanna cover off a few kind of key areas and bits of advice that I think can really help people when they're just starting out. And to be honest with you, it's good for me to try and remember these things as well, because it's easy to lose sight of them. And I've done another video on this before that covers some of the key points, stuff that if I'd known, I probably wouldn't have beaten myself up so much about. And I think that's a problem we often have in our industry, is that we're really harsh on ourselves, especially when we're starting out, because it's like, well, I've just got to be perfect straight away. When in actual fact, you don't, and no one expects you to be perfect straight away. And if they do, then screw them. First thing I'm gonna talk about is why you need to just get rid of the fear of being wrong. Then I'm gonna talk about the importance of not getting siloed, not just in the way that you work, but in the way that you think and read about what we do. And then finally, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why there is a bit of a cult of the individual in the advertising industry, and we really need to be thinking more about why teams are important. So I'm gonna start out by talking about why we need to lose the fear that we have at the very start about making mistakes and getting it wrong. It's really easy to fall into the trap of thinking that you actually should know everything by the time that you're a year or two in and that by now you should just be able to, you know, stand up in front of a marketing director and just deliver a presentation. And you find yourself looking at people around you and maybe there's someone who's progressing faster than you and you're like, oh well, I should be, and you end up beating yourself up. And in reality, it just doesn't happen like that. And if you do think that you know everything by two years, well then, sorry to break it to you, but you're wrong. In reality, we hold ourselves up against professions like law and accounting, the sort of big city suits and all that kind of stuff. When in reality, we're far less similar to them. And we're actually far more akin to tradesmen. The difference is, of course, that we sit at desks. Now, as I said, we're, we're all really far more akin to sparkies and plumbers because in reality, at the start, you're just working out what all the different elements of what you do are, how they work, how they fit together, how you can use them. Now, some people have formalized marketing qualifications and education, and I would actively encourage anyone who can afford that sort of thing or is allowed to by their agency to go and do it because it's gonna structure the way you think and give you a really strong fundamental understanding of what we do. But it can be easy to then start thinking that maybe there's a perfect way to do this and there's only one way and this is the right way when that's not necessarily the case because what we do isn't a perfect art, it's an imperfect art. And the way that you get past this kind of fear of the imperfection is just to keep doing it Keep going and trying to put yourself in positions where you're going to gain that experience. From a media point of view, it's very easy to assume that because we work with so much data, that within this data, there's going to be the right answer. And just you've just got to go through it all and you'll eventually, you know, like you're mining for a diamond, just, you know, keep going and, oh, here it is. But in reality, what we're actually doing is going through this data and interpreting it and you're processing it with your brain and with your team around you to try and work out probably the least wrong answer because there are lots of different ways of solving business problems and it's very rare that you actually find a singular way of doing it. You're better off trying to get to an answer and just accepting that it's likely to be wrong and then taking the feedback and pushing beyond it and using your team's experience around you to help you improve it in that way rather than just kind of paralyzing yourself because you're like, oh, I've got to try and find the right answer. And otherwise my boss is gonna think that I'm crap and then I'll be found out and oh my God, I'll lose my job and ah. That's not the way to think about these things. And I've done that so much during my career. And I wish that someone had kind of earlier on said, it's okay to be wrong, because it is. Now within all of this, it's important to remember that the theory and all of the kind of walk articles, the reports, the data, the books that you read of the, you know, the Byron Sharps of this world, etc., they all contribute to helping you get to the right answer or, you know, sometimes the least wrong answer. But each time that you find yourself applying this and combining it with the tools at your disposal, you're going to get better, especially if you're getting good feedback from your team around you. So you've just got to keep going with it. Once you've accepted that you just know that sometimes you're gonna be wrong and you're not always gonna be right, 
it's really freeing because all of a sudden you'll find yourself going, okay, well, let's just put that together and we'll see. And I, I think it's right because of this and this, but we'll see. Seems kind of ridiculously obvious when you when I put it like that, but it didn't really occur to me for years. I think the second thing that I want to talk about today is about kind of not getting siloed in the way that you think. And I think this comes really from the fact that when you start out in a media agency or a creative agency, you'll likely just be doing a very specific job and it will be entry level with, you know, not a huge amount of responsibility. You're going to have to, you know, find your place within the hierarchy, which is probably near pretty much at the bottom at this point. But what you need to try and do is understand what the tasks that you're being asked to do are and how they contribute to the wider process because you'll be doing them for a reason. But what you don't want to do is just kind of approach it like some sort of computer processor where it's like, okay, cool, yep, I've done that. I've pulled those reports. I've gone and uh, put those entries onto the booking system and that's that and great, give me the next one. Try and understand why you're doing it because then once you start understanding the process and using this time to start building that understanding, then once you start trying to move out of that position, you're gonna understand how everything fits together well enough. Also fundamentally, by starting in those kinds of positions at the bottom, when you're further up the ladder, because if you're driven, then you will get there, you'll understand what people are doing at the bottom of the ladder and you can think about ways that it might actually be done better. In fact, don't even wait until you're up there. If you can think of better ways of doing the tasks that you're entrusted to do, chances are someone further up the pile is gonna really appreciate that feedback. So formulate it properly, think it through before you go and talk to them about it, but bring it to them because it's only gonna make you look good. I think the other thing about when you're in a very specific role, so you know, if you're, if you're a digital buyer or if you're a, an insight executive, is that you shouldn't just focus on the area that you've been given. So if, if you're buying paid social ads, for example, and working with Facebook self-serve interface, don't just read up about social media advertising, look up the advertising fundamentals so that you understand how advertising works and how social advertising would fit in to that. What's its role? How, why is it that it, why is it that it works with people? Don't just kind of drink the Facebook Kool-Aid. But seriously, and I think I've said this before in a few other videos as well. If you take the time to just push beyond your specific area and just take an interest in how everything works, go and ask people about how it works. You know, if you've seen your channel being used in conjunction with another one, why not go and talk to the people who specialize in the other channel? and then you can try and work out exactly how that works. This, this is stuff that most people just won't do because people come into work and they do their job and it's like, right, great, get money, get paid, get sorted and go home and enjoy the weekend. And yeah, okay, we all do that. We all like going home for the weekend, but if you can just push that little bit further, then immediately you're gonna start standing out to people who are more senior than you in the agency. The third thing I wanna talk about today is the cult of the individual and why I think we need to reframe this as a focus on teams. But it pervades within strategy and within planning and it's definitely within the, uh, the creative industry. If you're a part of a creative agency, you'll almost certainly know of creatives who are these kind of like mystical personalities. And it's like, oh my God, he's so amazing. I can't believe that she's like thought all of this stuff up. And they get put up on this pedestal just because they produce brilliant work. Now. It's rare that those kind of lone wolf figures are actually lone wolves because, okay, yeah, they'd be really smart, but all of these people sit within brilliant teams and no one can be brilliant as an individual without an incredible team around them. And I truly believe that a strong team without these kind of huge egos is a much better way to run things rather than kind of focusing on just having like a few superstars. Now, why is that relevant for, for you kind of, you know, earlier on in your career? If you've just been there one or two years, you don't get to decide what goes on, you know, how, how teams are formed, etc. So, well, firstly, one day that you probably will. Two, it's really important to understand this sort of dynamic because when you're moving jobs or when you're looking to other departments in the same agency or even looking at your current team, it's really important to understand how those teams work together and to try and understand how people help each other out and to know that it's okay to be asking them to help you rather than just kind of putting it all on yourself. You see these big successful personalities churn out brilliant work on their own, you think, well, I, 
I should be exactly like that. And I've definitely thought that before. When in reality, you're just gonna make better work if you're using your team properly around you. So really, a bit of a rambly one today, but a few different things that I've been playing around with and I just think would be useful things to bear in mind, especially if you're starting to get that feeling that, oh God, maybe I'm not, you know, I don't know enough or I'm not smart enough yet or I'm, I'm not successful enough yet. It's like, it's fine, it takes time. I think I'm like approaching eight years in the industry now and you know, I'm only just starting to feel like, oh yeah, maybe, maybe I'm kind of getting what's going on now. Maybe I'm, I'm actually kind of, you know, all right at this. And it's, you've just got to try and get that little, that feeling of, oh God, I need to be right off your back. You need to keep reading about like the, the wider industry and how things work rather than just getting tunnel vision of just thinking about planning or strategy or, you know, TV or whatever it is that you, you work in. And then fundamentally also just trying to work out the best way to work with your team so that you're not just putting all of the pressure on yourself because you know this whole you know myth of the of the genius advertising person like your Don Draper or something. You just need to cut yourself a little bit of slack and just reframe the way that you think about it. Think of it like a trade. You just gotta keep plugging away, gaining that experience, learning your trade, and then eventually one day, you'll probably not realize it, but you'll become the artisan. And then, you know, you're laughing. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will be posting more in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching, guys. We've got this.